Welcome back. All right, so uh, the THG Hall of Fame. I've been doing THG Hall of Fame videos for many years now. Uh, sp spanning across, I think, two different moves that we've had. So three different sets I've done THG videos on. But uh, at any rate, uh, I wanted to do like an all THG, not in the Hall of Fame uh, video. Now, since I put him in the Hall of Fame, Sergei Zubov's actually gone into the Hall of Fame. Uh, and so he's in both the THG and the real Hockey Hall of Fame. There's the possibility that somebody on this board that I'm doing tonight ends up in the Hall of Fame tomorrow. There might be a couple that uh, get mentioned, end up on the board, that end up in the actual Hall of Fame tomorrow. So I wanted to get this done tonight before that actually happens. And I wanted to talk about this. Now, getting this narrowed down to four lines, really difficult. Getting it narrowed down to six defensemen also, pretty difficult. And uh, getting it narrowed down to two goaltenders, that's painful. It's really, it's painful because there have been so many goaltenders that I've been a big fan of from the 80s, from the 90s, that narrowing it down is is not easy. But I shall do my best. Uh, or I've done my best, and uh, there's honorable mentions coming as well. A lot of left-wing honorable mentions. So I'll start with the first-line left-winger. Uh, and standing six feet tall, and, and I'll talk about the height because you can see that, like, the average height of hockey players has definitely gone up. But the first line left wing, I am a Canuck fan, so do not be surprised when there are a number of Canucks, starting with Marcus Nasland. If Nasland had been a a 50 goal scorer for multiple seasons if he'd had multiple 100 point seasons beyond what he had I think he'd already be in the Hall of Fame I don't think there's a Hall of Fame career there sadly his peak was too short and um, if Naslin didn't win a Stanley Cup either so while I really appreciated Naslin when he was in Vancouver I thought he was a great player uh, once once he started to drop in his production it was fast because uh, I remember it seemed like it was just a fait accompli. He'd hit, hit a thousand points, and then he just didn't. So Naslin ends up on the first line left wing. On the second line, standing six foot two, and I don't know how he's not in the Hall of Fame. I, I honestly don't. Gary Roberts was a fantastic player, uh, really revolutionized the way that we look at conditioning, too, since he retired. Uh, and he came back from injuries that nobody thought he would. Basically, he was he was done. That's it. He's out of hockey. And then he was back. And the fact that he played for as long as he did with all of these stops and starts along the way, nothing short of remarkable. And yet, when we talk about who's not in the Hall of Fame, Robert's name doesn't get mentioned nearly enough. So a lot of love for me towards Gary Roberts. Um, then on the third line... And a little bit of toughness here. Standing five foot eleven, just don't tell him that. Tiger Williams. Now his first name is Dave Williams, but nobody nobody called him David or Dave. I as far as I know, nobody's called him that for for a long time. So he's Tiger. Um, Tiger Williams, absolutely one of the toughest players. He could also score. That was the surprising part. Was he got to Vancouver and he had I think it was what thirty five goals that one year. Yeah, he could score, and absolutely one of my favorite players. And again, this is from my my THG Hall of Fame. So there's there's going to be a Canucks influence here, uh, which continues on the fourth line here. Now Martin Jelena ended up having a good long career and played with you know Calgary and Carolina just as much as Vancouver. Um, obviously, I became a huge fan when Vancouver picked him up on waivers from the Nordiques. And then he just started scoring goals, and he looked fantastic. And I remember being really surprised as a kid, because when they picked him up, I was like, eh, I don't know, I guess Jelena, fine, whatever. And then, no, uh, he, he had that scoring edge, and of course he had the Stanley Cup in Edmonton as well. So uh, Jelena, yeah, he moved around the league a bit, but honestly, you got a really good effort out of him every single game, and he was a winner. He was absolutely able to find that winning formula during his career. Uh, was part of that 94 run for the Canucks as well. Uh, then we get to center. So honorable mentions on the left side are Essa Tikkanen, Rick Martin, Buffalo Sabres, Ray Whitney, and uh, Darcy Rhoda. I really wanted to find a way to, to, to get Darcy Rhoda on there, but yeah, he gets beaten out by Jelen and Roberts. Uh, now, down the middle, uh, standing 6'5", oh, Jelena is 5'11". 
uh, number one center. And, I, I, you know, it doesn't really matter which line they're on. But Jason Arnett. Uh, the interesting thing with Arnett is I, I wasn't that impressed with him when he first joined the NHL. I know he had a good rookie season. I'm not saying he didn't. But I got more impressed with him as he got older. And it felt like his game got better as he got older. And so, yeah, uh, Arnett ends up on the first line. Um, with Nasland, obviously, they never played together. Would have been interesting if they had, though. Uh, so also down the middle and on the second line standing five foot nine. Good for him. Minnesota North Star. When I started watching hockey, I was a big fan of Neil Broughton. He was also part of the Miracle on Ice in 1980. And so, yeah, Neil Broughton, who then wins the Stanley Cup in New Jersey. I, I don't think he ever makes it to the National or National Hockey League. Almost made that mistake. I don't think he ever makes it into the Hockey Hall of Fame. But still, excellent career in its own right. And definitely, I think, deserves to be on the board in this one. Uh, then on the third line... And it feels weird to put him on the third line because in his prime, he could play first line minutes. Although I will say this, Cliff Ronning was my favorite member of the Canucks ever. I have a lot of Ronning jerseys. I have numerous Ronning jerseys. Um, for other teams he played for too, not just for Vancouver. But Ronning was one of the hardest working forwards ever. But I I think it would have been better for the Canucks when they were that 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 juggernaut in the early 90s if he'd been the second line center, if they'd had kind of that Messier type in the, in the middle. I know Messier eventually came over and wasn't quite the same by the time Messier got there. But man, if Ronning had been on that second line, if they'd had a really good first line center, who knows what those Canucks might have been able to do in 92 and 93. Um, but yeah, Ronning, one of my favorite players. Uh, now, uh, the fourth line, and this is weird to put him on the fourth line because for Laurie Boschman, I don't think he was on the fourth line until he played with Ottawa towards the end of his career. Uh, at the peak of his career, he was he was generally uh, regarded as a very good goal scorer, tough player as well. There's no lack of toughness in this lineup either. I, I do think that this is a lineup that could take care of themselves with all the scrumminess that goes on in front of the nets these days. I think these guys would be okay. So an honorable mention down the middle, Saku Koivu. So we get into the right-hand side here. Uh, on the right, your first line guy. Alexander McGillney. McGillney may very well be going into the Hall of Fame tomorrow. That's why I'm doing the video tonight. Uh, I think if, if McGillney's ever going to make it to the Hall of Fame, I think it's going to be this year. And I think, he's, I think he deserves it. The story of how he came over, the defection for McGillney, combined with the 76-goal season, other 50-goal seasons he had, Stanley Cup win in, in New Jersey, really good run with Toronto. There are a lot of things with McGillney's career that I think justify putting him in the hall. I will say I think there are players who are in the hall who've done less than McGillney has in his career. And so, yeah, I mean, the Rocket Richard Trophy, if it existed all the way back when, he would at least have, I think he would at least have one did he lead the league in scoring again? I don't think so, but at any rate, yeah, McGillney for me, first line right winger. Uh, second line, one of the best goal scorers of his era, and standing six foot two as well. Uh, McGillney stands six feet tall, but uh, and so does Laurie Boschman. But Tim Kerr uh, was a great goal scorer whose body betrayed him as he just kept getting injures, injuries. Uh, he was great on the power play, absolutely ridiculous shot, and. Honestly, at a time where I was no Flyers fan, but I love Tim Kerr. I love Tim Kerr and I love Brian Propp. I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of the rest of the team. I mean, well, Mark Howe as well. But at any rate, um, yes, Pete Peters. I haven't done the Pete Peters video yet. I'm aware. But yeah, Tim Kerr, one of the best goal scorers who I think you could make an argument could go into the Hall of Fame for the same reason that Cam Neely went in. Neely's career was shortened by injury, but he was a great goal scorer, a pure sniper, and so was Kerr. So, uh, and of course, power forward with Neely's game. Well, Kerr wasn't really a slouch at six foot two. Uh, he, I mean, he could take hits. It's just, you know, eventually his body wears down on him. Uh, so third line, and I could go back and forth on which of these guys should be on the third line or the fourth line. But I'll put Jamie Langenbrunner on the fourth line, or third line, I should say. Uh, Langenbrunner, of course, one of my favorite Dallas stars. He ended up plays in New Jersey, played quite well. Uh, honest game every night out of him, hardworking player, and one of the best hockey names in the history of the National Hockey League. Just And that is that is a factor. That absolutely is a factor for me as a kid watching hockey. 
the the player having a really fun name. It's the same as my wife, really, as a kid. She was, okay, I like the mask of that goalie. I'm cheering for that goalie. For me, it was, his name is, what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's my favorite guy right there. Um, I, I know, like, here's, here's kind of an aside, but for Vancouver, I always wanted Burt Robertson to do well because, hey, Burt. I just, I really, really wanted like an Ernie Haybert every time he scored. And he just, he didn't score often enough and, and it never happened. And I was very, 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 very disappointed. Sort of like Detroit fans with Bertuzzi and Ernie and them not being on the same line. What, what's the point? What's the point of having players named Bert and Ernie if they don't play together? So there's Langebrenner on the third line, fourth line. Uh, the rants are free, by the way. Uh, yeah, fourth line, and this is tough because I, I don't know if Yuri Lettinen ever actually played on the uh, on the fourth line. I don't think he did. Uh, Lettinen was one of the best two-way forwards I ever watched. Um, not in the Hall of Fame either. And now that Guy Carboneau's in, I think you can make an argument for Lettinen. You could try. Um, but for the Brindamore crowd out there who's all, ah, Brindamore. Yes, Brindamore would have to go in before Lettinen. I will agree with you on that one. Um, I do think the Brendamore crowd probably won't be all that happy tomorrow either. And then we get on to the blue line. Now, I've done fewer videos on blue liners. Oh, uh, honorable mention, again, Saku Koivu down the middle, and on the right-hand side, Pat Verbeek. Verbeek just misses the cut. I had originally thought, well, I could do five for each position. I thought, no, just two honorable mentions. But on the blue line, I haven't done nearly as many defense, at least kind of sort of, because you need six defensemen, right? So on the left-hand side, uh, first pairing, standing six foot two, uh, now an assistant coach with the Vancouver Canucks, but uh, Sergei Gonchar. Absolutely loved Sergei Gonchar when he played. One of the best offensive defensemen in the league, uh, and and really um, no complaints about him. I I know his foot speed kind of wasn't there towards the end of his career. But I thought the offense was good enough, and he was a smart enough player that it offset some of that. But I, I know his defensive game really suffered towards the end of his career there. And then on the right-hand side, um, six foot three, and a video that I've just recently done, Kevin Hatcher. So I was aware I didn't have that many defensemen for the THG Hall of Fame. And I thought, all right, well, I can do videos on Kevin Hatcher and Darian Hatcher. Darian Hatcher doesn't show up on this board. He's a left-handed defenseman. And I already had too many left-handed defensemen once I got to that part of the playlist. But I, I knew, like, I wanted to do the Hatcher Brothers videos before I did, like, an all-team like this. And I'm glad I did. Because if you had Gonchar and Hatcher, I mean, the defensive side of it might be a little bit suspect with the two of them paired together. Just thinking, eh, there might be a coach who's getting some gray hairs with the two of them out there defensively, but offensively running a power play, uh, that would be something. Uh, so second pairing, standing six foot one. You want to talk about careers that should have been longer. Craig Hartsburg. Uh, Craig Hartsburg was, was fantastic. One of my favorites for the Minnesota North Stars in the 80s. Uh, again, just too bad his career wasn't longer. But he was he was a prime talent. I, I really appreciated Hartsburg's game, and yeah, he would he would definitely for me again putting this team together. I'd have Hartsburg on that second pairing. Uh, on the other side, Vlad Konstantinov, Dallas or Dallas Detroit Red Wings. Uh, of course, his career was way too short, um, but. You know, Vlad was quite the story. And when he played, he was tough as nails. He was one of the tougher players in the league. And if not for how short his career was, I have no doubt Vlad Konstantinov would have ended up in the Hall of Fame, the real Hall of Fame. Uh, he, he was that good. But again, his career gets cut short. And with the selection being, you know, you can only, only put in four players a year. The odds of Konstantinov being one of those four players... It just feels like the further away we get from that 1997 accident, the less likely it becomes, the less talk there would be about Konstantinov, but I'm recognizing him here. And then on the third pairing, standing 5'11", the greatest name of all time. There is no name that's ever existed in hockey that I have enjoyed more than Pekka Rodicalio. And that goes back to when I was 8. 
I want to say I was eight when I learned to say Pecorata Calio, and and I I he was my favorite player because I thought that name was fantastic. Even his hockey card, the the letters are all scrunched together, and I'm like Pecorata Calio. Oh, that's 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 genius. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. And he also he was a really good offensive defenseman who chose to go back to Europe rather than play his career in the NHL. And if you go you look at his numbers, yeah, if he'd stayed in the NHL, who knows? Uh, he might have scored six, seven hundred points in the NHL. He might have lasted a long time if he'd played his whole career in the NHL. Uh, but this was at a time where you know players weren't getting five, six, seven million dollars a year. And you could you could make a good living over here, but you could probably make a good living at home too. And he decided to be at home, so I, I really honestly don't have any any beef with him for that. Honorable mentions on the left hand side: Brad McCrimmon and Steve Duchesne. And then on the right hand side, Kevin Bieksa, Kevin Bieksa, Vancouver Canuck, great and all of that. And so he is the one Vancouver Canucks defenseman. Uh, that, that makes it onto the board. Um, I've never done a THG induction for Doug Lidster, I guess, because it's not part of the playlist, and I went just with the playlist. Uh, it is possible there might be a Hall of Fame induction or two that I've missed putting into the playlist, but it's there. And uh, yeah, Kevin Bieksa, uh, just really, really good career. And and the way the storyline, too, the, of him punching Fedor Fedorov and knocking him out and Brian Burke deciding to sign him just based on that, it's it's a great tale, and no matter how accurate it is or it isn't, once it's out there, yeah, we love that as fans, right? Wait, you signed him because of who he knocked out in the minors? All right, well that checks out. And yes, Fedor Fedorov, the brother of Sergey Fedorov, um, not quite the same on the talent level, and not quite as popular with his teammates as evidenced by BX and knocking him out. Uh, so yeah, Kevin BX. Uh, honorable mention on the right hand side to, uh, I mean, I was gonna put Zubov in, and then I realized. Zubov's in the Hall of Fame. So since I did the Sergei Zubov video, he has made it into the Hall of Fame. Maybe maybe we see Miguelny go in tomorrow and maybe one of the goaltenders. So the number one goaltender... Oh, I want to get into the heights of my blue liners too. So on the left-hand side, Hartsburg 6'1", Radicalio's 5'11", Gonchar 6'2". So I got one defenseman below six feet on the, on the right. Uh, or on the left. On the right, I have one below six feet as well, but that's Vlad Konstantinov. BX is 6'1", Hatcher 6'3", and Konstantinov plays much larger than 5'11". So I think we'll be okay there. But in net, I have Curtis Joseph. He's 5'11". That's a Soros height. So we would hear a lot about how small Curtis Joseph was if he played now. But the reality is, most goalies were short. That was That was a big difference between then and now. Goalies now are about a half a foot taller. It's much easier to play goal if you're a half a foot taller. It's easier to control, to protect more of the net. So it wasn't really the fault of 80s and 90s goaltenders that their equipment was smaller and they were a half a foot shorter, but there you go. Uh, so Curtis Joseph, one of the best big game goalies I ever saw that did not win a Stanley Cup. He was, his playoffs with, especially in Toronto, St. Louis, Edmonton, basically if you wore blue, let's not talk about his time in Detroit. But in general, he had a really good playoff resume outside of his time in Detroit. He really flourished with more shots against and seemed to enjoy the challenge of taking a team that maybe defensively was a little bit suspect and making their numbers better. And yeah, one of my favorite goaltenders. Uh, and then the backup would be Kirk McLean. Has to be Kirk McLean. Now, I could make an argument for others, and the honorable mentions go to Chris Osgood, who was 5'11", or 5'10", sorry, Osgood's 5'10", Andy Moog, 5'8", John Garrett, also 5'8". They all get honorable mentions. Kirk McLean, 6 feet tall, and a stand-up goaltender at a time where we started seeing the butterfly becoming more and more popular, thanks to some guy named Patrick Waugh, and the Quebec goaltenders came in in the early 90s, and it was, it was insane once that Quebec goaltending wave took over. But Kirk McLean was a stand-up goaltender, and he was quite good at it. And ended up dragging the Vancouver Canucks all the way to a Stanley Cup final in 94. I say dragged, and yet... Well, I mean, I can, I can say that in that, that first-round series against Calgary, he did get the overtime wins in games 5, 6, and 7, which tells you he was a good goaltender, and they could rely on him. And he showed that throughout his career for the most part. So... He gets on the board, 
and there you go. There's your, your THG all-time Hall of Fame roster, uh, which we'll see whether or not Curtis Joseph ends up getting in and whether or not McGillney gets in. I don't think Cujo's going to get in, but I saw a couple articles today talking about Joseph's resume and that he should be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not going to say he shouldn't be. Uh, again, Osgood, I think, should be in there too. Uh, but that's that's where things get a little bit murky, right, is trying to justify who does or who doesn't get in. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And I have seen uh, people asking, you know, could you do like an all, your all team for like current players? And I, I can. I, I know that people wouldn't necessarily agree with it. And I'm debating about does it have to be salary cap compliant or no? That's where, that's where I'm kind of torn, because if it has to be salary cap compliant, it's probably going to look a lot different than if it doesn't. Because if this team had had, uh, had to be salary cap compliant, and if I was trying to figure out how much money these guys would have made in their primes, no, wouldn't have been able to put this team together. But that's the magic of the internet. I could just throw the names on the board, and there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.